Hi, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm new at this, so you'll forgive my awkwardness. Um, living the dream here in quarantine. Uh, I have to remember to go outside sometimes, as do all of you probably. Um, it's very strange sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have some questions up already, so I guess I'll just dive in. Um, let's see. Did you learn a new skill during quarantine? And what will be the first thing you do when quarantine is over? Um, you know, I hadn't really thought about much about what I would do, although I really, I really miss seeing my friends in person. I really, I really miss it. You know, a couple of days ago was my oldest, bestest friend's birthday. And last year, I was able to fly to New York to spend it with her. And it was a little bit surreal a couple of days ago to know that I couldn't have traveled across town, never mind across the country, to see her. So um, last night I had a dream that uh, my family, my whole family and some friends went to the Santa Monica Pier and about half an hour into the time span of the dream, I suddenly realized that no one was wearing masks and we were around all these people and we'd gone out to dinner and we were in the crowds by the beach and I started to have a full on panic attack. So I think just being around people will be nice because <laughs> it's very stressful right now. Um, and as far as a new skill, uh, for me, it was a big deal. Um, I've been sewing a lot. I sewed a lot of masks. So that in itself is a new skill. Um, but I also have been sewing items and I learned how to put a sleeve into a jacket, which anyone who's ever sewn knows that it's not easy. I didn't even know what easing a sleeve in meant. And that took me about seven tries and a couple of searches on the internet to figure out but I was very proud of myself. Oh, I should have had it here had I known to show you. Um, maybe I'll wear it one day in a live panel and then anyone here will know what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, next question. What was the most technically difficult scene to shoot and the most emotional? Um, okay, so I would say there were two really technically difficult scenes. One was a fight I had with David Hayden Jones, and it was uh, directed by Richard Spate, and it was in one room. And he, in the script, it was written as like bursting through doors and going down the hall and flipping over desks. And he's like, no, I want this to be a cage match. So he choreographed with our stunt coordinator this fight in this room, and it took literally, I don't know, 14 hours to shoot this one fight scene. And it was very specific about where you could step and it was done piece by piece um, with our stunt doubles and it took forever and it was very, very specific. Um, the most emotional for me personally was, I think, um, well, <laughs> there was Lebanon, which was, I don't know if it was contagious. I, we just, all of us couldn't stop crying, <laughs> but, that was just more, I wasn't trying to conjure emotion. I didn't have to think about it. It just, I mean, I could cry right now thinking about it. The emotion somehow was just, it felt real. It was right there. So it wasn't challenging or difficult in an emotional sense. It just was. Um, as far as having to really work on it and, and fabricate emotion, um, there was a scene where I was being brainwashed and uh, begging, Mary was begging Ketch to, to kill her. And that was sort of a scene where you mentally and emotionally have to be at your worst and at the end of your rope. And that was, that was hard. That was hard to um, not only get to that point, but then maintain it while, you know, they shoot the whole scene from both sides and different takes and cameras. So um, that was challenging. Ah, okay, uh, next question. How did it feel when 
you found out Mary was coming back to life after all that time. Um, it was a surprise. Uh, <laughs> they had, I had gotten a call from my agent, I think, that Supernatural wanted to know if I wanted to come back for the finale. And I said, of course. Um, uh, I thought it was the end of the show. I thought it was the series finale. And I had always thought they would bring my character back. At long last for the very end of the show. And um, I didn't find out for probably a month. I, I went to a... Um, I went to a barbecue at Todd Ehrenauer's house. He was one of the producers. And I was like, dude, I'm going to be back on the show for the final one. It's so cool. What are you going to do next? And he looked at me funny and he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, now that the show is over, duh, what are you going to do? And he's like, it's not over. And I was, I just honestly, it was one of those moments where you can't, wrap your head around it. And he's like, you're, I said, yeah, I'm coming, but I'm in the, he's like, no, you're in the season finale. And then you're back next year. And I was like, what, what now? As, as what, how, what? And then of course I'm like, so confused. So that was the last information I got until after I went up to film. So I, all I knew is they had brought me back to life. I didn't know as what, I didn't know if I was really me. I didn't know if I was going to be like the the Mary we knew at the end when she at the end of uh, the like back in the pilot when she was like the homemaker and at home with her boys and just this sort of nice mom or if it was going to be um, the early Amy Gumenick version uh, of Mary which is ultimately where it went which was great um, I was ecstatic i was freaked out and scared because it was suddenly diving into this character that i didn't know but it was just um a huge a huge challenge but like the most fun i've ever had at work okay uh who would you have liked to have more scenes with oh goodness i mean i don't think you can ever have enough scenes with Jensen and Jared um, and or Misha and I, I would like to say Alex too but uh, I had lots of scenes with Alex and it was very fulfilling oh I know I had almost no scenes with Kim Rose and I would have liked that and then finally was it the last season I got to do a scene with Brianna I mean okay basically I would like to have a scene with all of them um, all the time that's and Ruth, I didn't get to do, I mean, maybe one scene. I'm not sure we ever spoke, actually. Ruthie would have to confirm that for me or not. I think we just had sort of like a side eye when Mary came back from the AU. Um, yeah, all of them, everybody, and the 15 people that I've missed. Uh, okay. If you had a chance to time travel, would you go to the past or future and why? I like that question. Uh, I think I would go to the past. I think that going to the future uh, would be too nerve wracking, even though of course we wanna know what the future holds. Uh, but I am fascinated by history and not just one, era. Uh, I'm fascinated by the Civil War. Uh, I'm really fascinated by like the ninth century with the Vikings. Um, I would love to go to the Victorian period for a little while. Um, I, I just, I'm fascinated by all the, the stuff and the, the modes of dress and the, and the technical things they had. And, um, that's one of my things about watching shows like, um, ah, it's not an earthquake. That's just me being a spaz. Um, okay, so that's um, uh, watching shows like Outlander, like when they have the the farm things where they're making candles or the printing presses or 
uh, when I watch Vikings watching like the tools and the weapons and how they make things, it's I find it fascinating. So, I mean, but who wouldn't want to fly in uh, a hovercraft? So, so it's a good question. Um, what is a talent that you're embarrassed to be good at? Well, I think I'm old enough now that um, I embrace the things that I'm good at, even if they're embarrassing. Um, I guess my point is they become less embarrassing the older you get. Um, I'm pretty nerdy. I'm pretty good at computer stuff. I mean, I'm not a coder. I'm not a hacker or anything like that. That is like super impressive to me. Um, but what else? Um, I don't know. I'm really good at, at like homemakey stuff, like knitting and sewing and baking. Um, I can. I used to be able to fix cars because before they became all computery. Like my dad taught me some stuff, um, but that doesn't really apply anymore unless the car is older than like 1970. <laughs> Um, I miss being able to ask you guys questions back. It's a little, a little strange. Um, let's see. Okay. I was wondering if you feel like a mom to Jared and Jensen when on set. Uh, no, not really. Um, I feel more like their bossy older sister. Um, but they are... They're, they kind of, I would say they, they are as respectful and deferential as if I were their mom. Like, they're so lovely to me. Um, and uh, I think I do boss them around a lot. But big sisters do that too, so. It's just hard when they're like a foot taller than you to feel parental. Um, so that, that's, that's one of the challenges <laughs> and even though I do boss them around that doesn't mean they listen <laughs> um so uh let's go into my next question what was my first acting job well my first actual dialogue was in a commercial for HBO and I was talking to an actor named Mark Taylor and then um, Dennis Hopper walks into the scene and we were talking, he was talking about him and I was, I just had never done back and forth dialogue with someone before. I had done a lot of things like, you should buy oil of Olay because it's magical. And a lot of just sort of advertising spokesman -y stuff. But after that commercial, um, I, started I got an agent and I started working started auditioning for actual um acting jobs and I had no idea what I was doing I didn't know you were supposed to memorize your dialogue for your audition I didn't know what to wear I didn't somehow it felt completely foreign to me from commercial work which I had done a ton of um and then bless their hearts probably because they were who they were and they could do what they wanted and weren't afraid of having a novice on the set. Um, they hired me for Seinfeld and I got to play one of Jerry's girlfriends as my first acting job. Talk about being a nervous wreck. I had no idea where to stand. So I didn't know what to do with my script. So they give you a script on the first day and particularly in half hour, but on even on Supernatural on any show, as you're filming, they do rewrites of little pages or, you know, scenes change a little or they change dialogue and they will give you a set of pages that's a new color. So it's first one is blue and then there's yellow and there's pink and you're supposed to insert them into your script so that the changes are um, uh, consistent in everyone's script. Well, I would take one look at the pages and be like, I already have these and throw them away. So everyone we're sitting on set and the way half hour works is you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and then you usually film on the last day and for some reason this one episode we didn't do that so we'd rehearse on the set and then film and so we're sitting there 
on set reading from our pages, doing these scenes, and people are saying lines, and I'm looking at my script, and I'm turning the pages, and I'm looking at everybody, and I have no idea what's going on. I was completely, like, and they're looking at me, waiting for me to say something, and I'm like, and um, <laughs> Jerry, was, Jerry Seinfeld was like, so your script's all one color. Um, where did you not get the pages? Like the, and I look at everyone's scripts and they're all different colors. And I was I'm like, and he's like, okay. And he had the script supervisor come and tell me what to do with all the, the colored pages. I was sure every day I was going to be fired. And every day I'd be leaving CBS Radford like, well, it was great while it lasted. It was really fun. And then I didn't get fired every day. And I ended up making it through the whole time. Thanks in large part to Jason Alexander, who is the most professional person I think I've ever worked with in my life as a stage theater actor. Because I was so scared. I was talking like this little quiet voice. And he's like, okay, you have to talk like you're talking to someone on the other side of the thing. Everyone was so helpful. So it was a little bit of like a baptism by fire. But after that, I had a lot more confidence. That's for sure. It was a long time ago. Some of you probably don't even remember Seinfeld. It was this show. It was a comedy. Um, okay, sorry, I'm getting behind. Uh, I was wondering if you feel like, no, we did that one already. If you could have taken any prop from the Supernatural set, what would it be? Well, does the Impala count as a prop? Because I would totally fight Jensen for it. Um, I... Hmm. I liked a lot of my weapons, but I can't really take those. I want my boots. Mary's boots. I want those. Um, what else? I don't know. I, I, there are so many cool things we got to work with. Our prop person um, just came up with the coolest coolest stuff all the all the magical things like the Enochian puzzle box and the um just all the all the little tricky magical stuff um I don't know maybe the marble from Lebanon that would be a cool thing to have um yeah, I was just thinking there was something else I wanted. What was it? I can't remember. There was just, you know, as you're going through the episodes, there's so much stuff that's going through, and you're like, oh, this is cool, but it goes so fast. And then you do another episode that is so new and full of other stuff that you, um, you, it, it gets like pushed out of your mind because it's a constant, it's like drinking from a fire hose, right? Like you just have a constant stream of, um, of, of new stuff to digest. But yeah, I think the marble and my boots and the Impala. The boots and the marble could go in the Impala and they can just drive it to me. Don't tell Jensen. <laughs> if you could hang out, okay. Uh, if you could hang out with one person dead or alive for one day, who would it be and why? Oh, uh, I think I'd have to pick like a, a historical figure like um, Amelia Earhart or Harriet Tubman. Um, or uh, I think I'd love to sit down and have lunch with the women who worked for NASA in the 60s. You know that movie? What was that movie called, you guys? Somebody tell me. I can see, I can see a thread here. What was it called? Uh, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, smart, progressive, fearless women. I think that we could always learn from them and history hasn't always been so, uh, hasn't always paid attention to them so much. So 
think I would benefit greatly from that. Uh, let's see, what else? Hidden figures, thank you. Everyone gets a prize. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I loved you on Friends. Thank you. Who Would you like to do more comedies? I would love to do more comedies. It's so fun. It's, you know, you laugh all day. Um, I, in the beginning of my career, as I just said, from I started on my first job with Seinfeld, and then I just did tons of comedies. And then at some point there was just a, a switch and I started doing very serious drama. And it's strange. Sometimes you're sort of seen as somebody who can only do one or the other. And it's almost like I feel like I forget how to do comedy, um, which is ridiculous. Of course, that's not true, but that's what it feels like. Um, but of course, I would love it. I would love it. I watch my, we were watching Modern Family with my son. We watched all of them. And Julie Bowen is a genius, and Sofia Vergara, and um, the person I watch the most, though, is, um, what's his name? Phil, Phil Dunphy. Um, I'm blanking on his name, and he is a comedic genius, um, and just to be around that would be fun, but um, I am not upset with having to do drama where I get to, I mean, Mary was really a dream role for me and I got to do everything uh, that I could have wanted in a part. So either way, I'll take them both. Uh, let's see, what is my dream vacation? That's a good one. Um, that's something nice to fantasize about right now, right? I mean, uh, it's a fun thing to do right now is plan fantasy vacation. Um, what else? So that's it my, for my craft room. I, I would love to fancy myself a painter, but I'm just not. I'm really not good at it. Um, okay. What is the favorite moment that has happened during quarantine? Huh. Um, I don't know. I wish, I wish I could ask you guys because maybe I'd have some inspiration. I want to see you in a steampunk outfit. I have so many. Maybe I'll post one on Instagram next week for Throwback Thursday. Um, I had a steampunk party where I made everyone come dressed in steampunk outfits. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, uh, let's see. I was very physical on the show. Was it hard? Did you have to learn action fighting? Yes. So, oh, back to when I didn't know what was going to happen um, in uh, as when Mary came back to life. When I finally did happen, um, Phil Sagrisha called me and asked me how much fight training I had had. And uh, I told him that sadly, the only fighting I'd ever done was with my sister. So they immediately put me in fight training with, um, a Krav Maga instructor that they sent to my house. And we set up mats in the backyard. <laughs> and my son was at the window, like, what are they doing? And I was trying to learn this throw for that first scene of season 12 when uh, Dean comes up to me and reaches out and I grab his hand. And I, I was supposed to do a turn flip and flip him over my shoulder. And you can't learn martial arts fighting, boxing, any of that in a few weeks. You can't, you can fake a couple moves, but you can't like learn what you're doing. And I learned that one move and I got passable at it. And of course, Jensen and the stunt person who was gonna stand up for Jensen, both would be doing it. And they're both going to be so incredibly professional at it that they would have been able to um, sell it for me. And I get to set and it's, you know, midnight or 10 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock at night and it's raining and we, we're running out of time because the park's going to close for, for filming and we have to get it done. And <clears throat> they're like, okay, 
we're not going to do that throw you learned. We're going to do something else. And I'm like, that's the only thing I know. We can't do anything. No, no, no. And they're like, no, no, no. You're going to do an arm bar and you're going to twist him and throw him down in front of you. And then you're going to jam your foot in his throat and twist his arm. And you're going to be like, who are you? And I was like, no, I can't do that. And they're like, yes, you can. And so they made me do it. And thank God for Jensen at, and how incredibly uh, knowledgeable and talented he is at all kinds of physical fighting stuff. Um, so I throw him on the ground, face first into the dirt, uh, the mud, because it was raining. Um, and so <laughs> he's face down in the dirt and I'm supposed to be pretending to like twist his arm and I have to jam my foot into his jaw. And I was like, I'm like, I'm gonna hurt him. And he's like, you gotta twist my arm, I gotta twist it. And I'm like, well, what if I twist it too far? And he kind of looks up at me like this. He's such a jerk, cause he goes, no offense, if you twist it too far, I'll just twist it back. I'm like, okay, and not on purpose, supposedly, but the next take, I actually did kind of clock him in the jaw with my foot. I'm like, I'm sorry. But um, <laughs> he survived. I think he was okay. I don't think he was mad. Uh, but after that, I started working much harder on all the fighting. I think I think I was just trying so hard to, to incorporate everything um, that it really wasn't until season 13 that I got myself a boxing trainer because I, I was just working with the um, fighting choreographers in Vancouver for season 12. Um, I didn't have a lot of time. I, sh I wish I had done more at the time. It just honestly, it didn't occur to me. I was like, I I'm learning what I need to learn. And I could have uh, definitely done better. But um, by season 13 into 14, I was going to boxing. I was learning all that stuff. Um, so yes, it was incredibly challenging. Uh, I had my share of whiplash and bruises, uh, nothing broken or horrible. Um, what are you guys all laughing at? It must be when I clocked Jensen in the jaw with my foot. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I didn't take anything from this set without them knowing it. They know everything. They know everything you tweet. They know everything that's happening. Um, and honestly, I feel like if... Uh, if I asked them if I really wanted something, they would have given it to me. Except the Impala! Um, no, I have never pulled pranks on any of the boys. And they know better than try to pull one on me. Um, that would be the end for them. They know it. Uh, next con, I should wear steampunk. Maybe I will! Um... If you were behind the camera rather than in front, oops, where did it go? Which, what would you like best, makeup, costume, directing, or props? I would like to be a producer. I want to be the boss. Um, let's see. Your physical. Okay. Uh, if you can pick a favorite Marvel superhero, who would you want to be? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I really like um, Jeremy Renner's character. He doesn't have superpowers, but he's like with the with the arrow. But if I had to be like a superhero superhero probably thor i think i'd like to be a god that would be nice um would i ever consider getting the supernatural anti-possession tattoo i wouldn't personally um but i understand why people like it um i've seen many of them and they always look good on you guys um i had one right here on my ribs for one episode and it was kind of fun um but no, that, that's a little bit too much of a commitment for me. I have one tattoo on my arm and it's tiny and it's for my son. Um, I love when people 
are just like I'm just too I'm just too timid to do it but like Kim Rhodes tattoos oh my god all you guys with your sleeves and all your I mean it's just the art is gorgeous um so yes by all means I get it I just uh I'm a chicken uh let's see will you be on the jury of yes I will be on the jury of SBN's family got talent I'm going to be a judge for the talent show not that I have any I don't because I don't have any talents of my own like that um I get to judge it let's see I was in NOLA for Halloween a few years ago and did a full steampunk costume I know it's so fun it's the best um what was my favorite episode to film I loved filming the raid because Mary was like in full general form in charge even though when things didn't went awry, like she got hit in the face with a machete, um, we did kill the original vampire, Rick Worthy, who's like the sweetest guy. We had such a nice time. Um, I also really loved filming in a bittersweet way. Um, my final episode, the, I think it's called Absence, where, um, I had really nice scenes with all, all the guys. Um, and I feel like those were sides of Mary that we didn't really get to see during the previous three seasons, except in little glimpses. And they showed the best of who she was um, in each of those little scenes. And I just, it felt like as sad as I was to leave, um, it was really a tribute and a gift to marry a character and me as an actor uh, to be able to do that whole episode. Um, do I believe in ghosts? Yes, I have a ghost in my house. Uh, we call him George and he's been here since we moved in. Um, he looks like a man from the thirties, like kind of a slouchy jacket, slouchy pants and boots. And like a newsboy cap. Uh, we think maybe he helped build the house. He doesn't really look like someone that lived in this area of town. Um, and the reason we know it's real is because I was, I just had a baby and um, so I was a little delirious, but I kept seeing him out of the corner of my eye in this one spot right over there in the corner uh, of the hallway and he was standing facing the corner and but not like in a scary uh what was that found film first movie about the 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 witches like he, he anyway there was a scene in there where this person standing in the corner like they're in trouble and scared and it's not he's just like hanging out like he's accidentally facing the wall but he was just standing there and when I would look, he would be gone. But, you know, I'd be in the, the room next door to the hall, changing my baby on the changing table. And he would look over and then he'd smile at something and there was nothing there. So I just, I never said anything until um, my landlord who lives upstairs came down and said something about, she heard something in the hall and I said, well, I think we have a ghost. And my husband was sitting right next to me and he looks at me and he goes, you've seen him too? And I was like, you know, that's when all the hair goes up on your arms and you're like, yes. And we described the same guy um, in the same spot. And my son, we didn't have many electric toys. Everything was pretty much wood and um, like felt and, you know, cloth and stuff. But we had a couple things that made noise, like, this little walker thing that looked like a race car. Um, so when he was like one and a half, like not even like 10, 11 months old, he's in this thing and he's cruising around the hall in this thing that looks like a race car, but it had like a horn and a radio and a car engine sound. And we used to store it because it was big, right? We would store it right in this corner of the hall. And sometimes in the middle of the night or sometimes during the day, it would go off for no reason. Like the horn would just start playing or the music would start playing. And we had two or three other electric toys that would do the same thing in that spot in the house. Um, he came and went, but 
after we hadn't seen him for a while, um, we had the we were having trouble with our um, chimney, our the the flu, like we were getting smoke in the house, and we had the chimney sweep come three times because it never worked. The, st the smoke kept coming in, and on the third time, he he like spent a lot of time with the flashlight looking up into the chimney, and he's like, I I can't explain it. He said it's clean. There's there's like this weird like fog, cloudy looking area. I don't know what that is, but I the smoke shouldn't be trapped in the house. And I looked at my husband and he looked at me. We know full well that that is where the ghost is living. And we have not had a fire since. It's been like 10 years. <laughs> We're done. George can hang. He's not um, malicious. I'm just, yep. He's he he wants to stay, so that's the way it goes. We live in LA. We don't need fires. Okay, um, am I running out of time? Uh, when I filmed the pilot, did they give you a sense you would return in the early seasons? Yes, I remember sitting next to Eric Kripke, um, and we were sitting in our little director's chairs at night. It was cold for LA, um, and I'm sitting there in my nightgown in my in my parka and um, looking at the house that burns down. And he said, you know, when we totally plan to have you back. And I said, you know, I die in the first 90 seconds of the show, right? I mean, obviously he did, but he was like, uh, yeah, but it's supernatural. You'll totally come back. I'm like, okay, because people always say that. I'm, I was supposed to come back on a ton of the shows I was on that I ended up only being in one episode um because the storylines change and whatever it's not personal um and then about you know so we filmed the pilot in like what march or april and then the show goes um i went to the launch party and saw everybody and um it was a screening at the producer's house and then like a month later because this was september right and so they started filming in july or maybe right around then i got a call that they wanted me to come up and do an episode and it was that episode home and I had so little to do but it remains one of my favorite scenes I've ever done there's so little spoken but there's so much in the scene and it means so much um that I just remember being like wow they actually are doing this and then every time they called me back I was like they came up with another excuse to bring me back and so when they did finally bring me back to life that's what I thought was going to happen in the last episode of the series. I thought finally the parents will be coming back to life, but they did it early. I mean, I don't think anyone expected it to go 15 seasons. So <laughs> had it only gone eight seasons, maybe that would have been the end. But uh, instead it was the beginning of season 12. Um, so yeah, it was uh, the gift that kept on giving. And when I auditioned for the pilot in a million years, I never saw this coming. I mean, who could have? Who could have? Um, let's see, uh, Jensen and Danielle just did a music video, which by the way, had the song, you can call me Al in my head for the entire day. Thanks to them. Thank you, Jensen and Danielle. Um, if I could do a music video to any song, what would it be? Oh God, it would have to be some eighties rock ballad, right? I don't know. <laughs> White snake or Bon Jovi. Uh, what lessons have you learned from your time on Supernatural? You know, as the SBN family, you know that the legacy of the show goes way beyond the show itself. Um, and some of the some of the lessons, some of the things I have learned and felt during this time, particularly the last few years, are simple but important. Like, you can just have faith that things will happen. Um, but personally, it's more about um, trusting myself and having that faith in myself, that I can do things, that I can accomplish things, that, you know, I look back on the last three years of my work and 
there are things that I see that I'm disappointed in, um, things I wish I had done better, things I felt like I could have done better. Um, but one of the other things I've learned is forgiveness. So I can't change the past. And a long time ago, somebody told me, they, it might be a proverb, I don't know, but they said, um, forgiveness is giving up hope for a better past. And I am so grateful for all the opportunities and the chances and the things that I was allowed to do and attempt and experience on this show. And it bleeds into my life. I mean, the friends I have made, the people I have met, the places I have been able to go, the experiences I had on and off set, um, that can't, you can't duplicate that. And not everyone always gets to have that. So uh, gratitude is the biggest lesson, I think. Um, okay, I guess, is that it? I think that's it. Um, I am so grateful that you were all here. Um, I wish I could see your faces. Uh, this is so isolating for everyone. And for, for those of us who are social beings, uh, it's, it's weird. And, and I know I can speak for myself when I say I really, really, really look forward to a time when uh, I can see you all again in person. Um, so much love. Thank you. And uh, see you next time.